in case that happens. Oh. Okay. Um, the recording has just started, um, but we need to have, um, yeah, so the others join back in. I'm not sure why it did it. All right, let's um, let's pray and get started. I'm sure Collins and uh, yeah, others will also join the call. Good morning, everyone. Let's uh, pray and get started. Could somebody lead us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, I pray for every one of my classmates who has joined. God, I pray that each and everything that we learn today will not just listen to it, but we will apply it in our life and we will uh, be a blessing to many people out there. You have called us to be the light and salt of this world, Lord. Help us to be like that by listening to this class, by accepting your words deep in our heart and by deciding to follow it in our life. I give Pastor Ashish into your hands. We bless him in the name of Jesus. Be with him and guide him throughout the session. I pray for all my classmates who are about to join. We pray for good Wi-Fi connection throughout the class so that we can listen to your word and be strengthened and be a blessing to others in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you good morning everyone thank you all right so bc213 is our course on the end times and um, uh, what we want to do in this course uh, is to get an overview of the end time events that have been foretold for us in the scriptures. So we want to uh, look at the scriptures and try to um, try to you know create a timeline or a sequence of events to the best we can. Uh, of the end time events that have been given to us in scripture. Of course, we cannot put any dates to any of this because uh, the Bible says, uh, you know, we don't know the the time, but, you know, we can get a sense of how we are very close. And these are all the events that are going to come to pass given to us in scripture. So we're going to, you know, make this journey, um, look at scripture, and try to see what the Bible has uh, given to us. So let me just introduce the course. Uh, I have um, given the uh, course outline. Um, let's see here. Oh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. The, uh, the end times. OK. Yes, Pastor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we're going to uh, look at the end times. Of course, uh, Israel, the nation of Israel, is a very important part of it. So, we'll be looking at uh, uh, Israel as a nation and how other nations around it are relating, uh, would relate to Israel uh, historically, and what the Bible says will happen in the future. And uh, you know, our goal in this in this uh, in this course is to get an overview of things. Next year, in the third year, we'll do a verse by verse study of Daniel and Revelation. So, this in this course, we will be going through the book of Revelation, and we'll kind of uh, look at it as a sequence of events. So, we won't go verse by verse, but we will do a full overview uh, of of the book of Revelation. Uh, but next year, in the third year, we'll go, you know, verse by verse through Daniel and through Revelation. So this course is more like an overview, get a full picture. Uh, next year, we'll do verse by verse. We'll read and explain everything. Okay. So both these courses, which uh, this course, 213, and next year uh, course are kind of connected. But next year course will take a different approach. We'll go verse by verse. This year, we'll give a good overview. And um, 
uh, you know, there are many um, uh, uh, Bible teachers who have done a lot of study on the end times and so on and so forth. Um, but um, one that I would recommend was is the late Dr. Jack Wanimpe. I've also shared one of his books. He's written many, many books. You can also go to his website. He passed away, uh, maybe, I forget exactly, maybe one or two years ago. Um, um, but uh, I would recommend his, his resources. Kind of, we're aligned to not in 100%, but in many ways, we are aligned to his uh, position and teaching on the end times. So I would refer to you, refer you to that. Now, let's get started um, with the introduction. Right. So, uh, technically, you know, the word eschatology is used. Uh, you know, so in in seminaries and theological institutions, they will use the word eschatology. That word simply means the end times, right? The word eschatos means last things. So eschatology is the study of last things or the end times. So, uh, but we will just call it the end times, right? So uh, if you, uh, if somebody says, you know, have you done a course on eschatology? Then you can say, yeah, I've done two courses. You know, when you graduate, you know, you've done one in the second year and done one in your third year. I have done two courses on eschatology, right? But it's basically talking about the end times. So today, you know, when we look at the world, there are so many things happening all over the world. And globally, we've gone through a pandemic, a huge, huge, huge thing affected uh, all over the world. And we are coming out of it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, political tension, you know. There are fightings going on Russia, Ukraine, uh, and then looking at how Russia and China are aligning themselves, and uh, and uh, seeing how other nations, what's happening in in Europe across the U European Union, um, those political situations uh, are of interest to us. And as we get into the Bible you will understand why it is it is interesting now to look at what is happening politically around the world and uh, what is going on. Along with that, uh, there are a lot of other things that we can also look at. There is uh, There has always been, you know, uh, terrorism and racial intolerance, but it is only getting worse, you see. Uh, things are going, you know, you're seeing more and more and more of it happen. Then uh, there are scientific and technological advances. Uh, it is very good, very helpful. Uh, it is making a lot of things convenient, but it's also positioning. Uh, as you look in the scripture, you'll see that all of this is moving in a direction uh, that has been foretold in scripture. And it is actually help, it is actually uh, preparing the way for the fulfillment of a lot of scripture, what, what has been spoken of in scripture. So it's very interesting when you look at the advances that are being made in science and technology, and then you look at what is what has been given to us in scripture, we'll say, wow, that scripture could not have been fulfilled 30 years ago. But today, that scripture can be fulfilled because of all these advances. The example, one example, I'm just giving an example. Uh, in Revelation chapter 11, uh, the Bible talks about the two witnesses who will come uh, in the end times. And, uh, you know, they will be doing great signs and wonders. And towards the end of their time of ministry, uh, they will be killed. They will be lying in the streets of Jerusalem. And the Bible says the whole world will see them. Now, you know, just about 30 or 40 years ago, that would be impossible. How can the whole world see what is happening uh, in some street in Jerusalem? But today, anybody can see it on their mobile phone. They can see, you know, uh, you can watch live news, or you can watch video coverage, and you can see live what is happening, you know, as these news channels carry things. So if there are two people lying dead in the street in Jerusalem, that can be 
seen live all over the world because of technology right or if you revelation chapter 18 uh, and we will look, look at all these things I'm just giving examples Revelation 18 talks about a global financial system and it talks about the whole financial system collapsing and everywhere all over the world people are affected financially now you think about this you see you know again if you look at this 30 years ago uh, that would not have been possible the financial markets of the world were not so connected yeah if something bad happened in one place of the world okay those people suffer others they don't they're not affected but today the financial markets globally are so connected you know if something happens in a certain part of the world it affects almost everybody financially and so uh, when you read revelation 18 and you look at that and you say wow in our world today revelation 18 can actually be fulfilled the financial markets are so connected the people who buy and sell in one part of the world are you know are affected by what happens somewhere else and and that can actually be fulfilled in our day and time you know so like this uh, uh, you know the, as you read the scriptures and you look at what is happening around the world you see that as time is progressing and as there are advances in so many science and technology and so on yeah all of these things can be fulfilled uh, be getting closer and closer um, if not you know everything can actually be fulfilled in the time in which we are living like that there are environmental and climate you know uh, changes that are happening yeah, uh, uh, and we have seen this, of course. There, there have always been earthquakes and plagues and pestilences and so on. But what we are seeing is there's a heightened increase in these things, and uh, you know we we are experiencing. We have just experienced uh, some of that. There are also social challenges, and again, this is very very. Uh, 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 it is coming out in the open you know society and Paul writes about this you know in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 he says in the last times the Holy Spirit is speaking expressly that means Holy Spirit is saying very clearly that in the latter times men will be you know lovers of self they will be haters of whatever is good and, and then he describes in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 the, um, the nature of people now Sin has always been there, and people have, all, you know, there have always been wicked people. But things in the in society have it's just, you know, it's going uh, in a way that's almost like out of control. Um, but Paul has written Second Timothy chapter three. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times. It will be like this, you know. So we can connect so much of what's happening in the scriptures to what we are seeing. In the world around us and religious and spiritual challenges of course so you know so it is what we are going to do some one of the things we'll also do as we go through this course is uh, as we're looking at all the events uh, foretold in the bible uh, we will also look outside and see what's happening in the world and connect it back to the scriptures right that's another part of what we're going to be doing in this course so why should we uh, so let us ask this question okay let me pause here and see if there are any questions before I go forward is everybody with me any questions so far everyone's okay all right okay uh, any, any, any questions uh, we're just in the introduction all right everyone's fine okay okay let's move forward So, why should we as believers take time to study about the end times? Why is this subject important? Now, of course, um, some people say, okay, I'm not worried about the end times. Uh, I am just, you know, I, I want to understand how to live life now, how to preach the gospel, how to, you know, uh, overcome the problems I'm facing in today's world. And I want to live 
as a good believer, etc. All of that is good. We are not against it. And that is important. You know, how to live life here on earth. Uh, that is important. Of course, the Bible tells us all that. But at the same time, we must understand the importance of studying the scriptures concerning things to come. Things that are going to happen in the near future and beyond, which has been given for us in the Word of God. Why must we do it? Why must we take time to do it? Uh, and I've just put uh, several reasons. Uh, first, because uh, God has revealed these things to us. So He has not only spoken to us about creation and redemption. But he has also spoken to us about things to come. He's put it in the Bible. So obviously, he's put it in there so that we can read it, we can understand it, and it will help us in the present. It will teach us how to live now. So because God has given it to us, it is of value, and we need to pay attention. So could somebody read here for us Revelation chapter 1? Verses 1 to 3. Could somebody read that for us, please? Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the word of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Mm. It is interesting. Notice uh, how the book of Revelation, you know, starts. Um, John writes, of course, he says, you know, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So uh, the Re book of Revelation, it is unveiling many things uh, about the end times and so on. But main thing he says, this book is revealing Jesus to us. And so book of Revelation is not a revelation of the Antichrist, though it does talk about the Antichrist. It is not a revelation of, uh, you know, the tribulation, though it does talk about the tribulation. It talks about many things. But the main thing God wants us to see in the book of Revelation is Jesus Christ, the main person. Because it's the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is a testimony of Jesus, what the Lord Jesus spoke. Right? And then in verse 3, I, I actually want to focus on verse 3. It says, you know, blessed is the, uh, are those people who read it, who hear it, and who keep it. Very interesting. So he's saying, see, this is all about prophecy. The whole book is about prophecy. The other words of prophecy. But... Blessed is the person, or blessed are the people who read it, hear it, and keep it. Right? So uh, there is a blessedness in studying Revelation. These are some people say, Oh, I don't want to study Revelation because uh, it is so difficult to understand. And actually, it's very simple. You know, uh, it is very clear. Uh, and as we go through it this semester and in, in, in the third year, you'll find that it is actually very easy to understand. And you just, you know, we need to know how to interpret what is there, along with the rest of Scripture. So, uh, so some people say, okay, it's too difficult. I can't understand. I don't want to read. But actually, the Bible says, verse three: If you read it, you hear it, you live by it, you are a blessed person. Yeah. So there's a blessedness there. So God does want us to read prophecy and listen to prophecy, and live by prophecy. And notice he said that time is near. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit. You know, uh, uh, when, when, when God speaks about time, 
for him time is very different right <laughs> excuse me for him time is very different he lives outside of time right we live in time so for us it's like oh it's been already 2000 years uh, since these prophecies were given and Daniel's prophecies were given even before that and you know Enoch prophesied you know <laughs> Enoch book by way back in the book of Genesis he prophesied he said I saw the I see the Lord coming with thousands of the saints so can you imagine Enoch prophesied about the end times he prophesied about Revelation 19 you know so in the book of Genesis what is taking place in the end in Revelation 19 was already foretold in a prophecy in Enoch, Enoch, Enoch said it so we said oh but so much time has gone uh, since uh, it, it was spoken well uh, it, it seems like a lot of time from our perspective but from God's perspective it's a small it's a minute thing right so that's why when God says time is near yeah for him it's very it's very short and we have to understand time from God's perspective now the second reason why we have to um, uh, study end time prophecy uh, end times and uh, things to come is because uh, God wants us to live in the light of that knowing that the time is near knowing that uh, we are close to the end of things uh, the Bible says you got to live properly right so understanding about the end times is going to bring out a response from us to live carefully right? and Paul also uh, you know mentions this in, in one I'm just giving one example uh, Romans 13 11 to 14 can somebody read it please Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 14 and do this understanding the present time the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because your salvation is nearer now than when we first believed the night is nearby over the day is almost here so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and departure, but in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, thank you, thank you, Jafina. So, Paul is saying, know the time. You know, in other words, uh, understand, you know, where we are, understand where we are living. The, the night has gone, the day is at hand, the day is at hand, right? That means, look, um, the time to be sleeping, the time to, you know, uh, to be fast asleep, that's gone, that night is gone, the day is at hand, we are very close to the morning, the daybreak. So live properly you know walk properly as on that day right so he's saying he's telling us uh, understand the times in which we are living understand day the night is over day is coming walk properly and like this you'll find many many other scriptures where you know first Thessalonians 5 uh, and so on where the bible says understand the coming of the lord is near so live properly right? that's another reason third reason why must we study the end times? So maybe I'll go a little faster here. This will take too much time. Is uh, because God wants us to be people of hope. Right? That means, yeah, we are going to have difficult things uh, that we go through here on earth. There will be different things that, that Jesus said in the world. You will have tribulation. Um, there are things that happen in this world, but we can look forward to something you know as believers we are looking ahead to something we have hope and what is that hope um uh, john writes you know first john chapter 3 verse 2 and 3 says beloved we are the children of god 
and uh, you know we still haven't seen and experienced you know what we, what will happen when when he is revealed when jesus comes back that when he's revealed we will be like him for we will see him as he is and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure so there is this precious hope that when i when we see jesus First of all, we have this precious hope that we will see Jesus and we will be like Him. Right? So we are looking forward to that. And when we see Him, we will be like Him. We, we will be changed into His likeness. And because we have this hope, we also keep ourselves pure in this world as we go through and as we journey through life, we keep ourselves pure. So that's another reason why we study. Uh, just number four, we understand that God is unfolding his glorious plan, right? And that in the end, everything will be put under his feet. So here's another, another reason why we study. Because people will ask us, you know, hey, you say there is a good God. Why is so much evil happening? You say, you know, Jesus is Lord, but look, you know, how much evil is going on, etc., etc. Yeah, and they will ask all these questions. But we know this is, you know, what we are seeing today is not the end of the story. There is a future which the Bible describes to us about where all of this evil will be taken out and there will be new heavens, there will be a new earth. Right. So we are looking forward into that future and we know that that's what the Lord is moving toward. He's unfolding His glorious plan and there are great things that He's going to do and, and we see it in many places in Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 26, can somebody read that for us please? First Corinthians 15, 24 to 26. First Corinthians 15, 24 to 26. Wow. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Mm. Amen. So, there's a time coming. He says, then comes the end. So there is a time coming. And what is it? That everything will be put under his feet. And Jesus is going to reign over everything. You know, God will rule. And everything will be under his rule and authority. Right. And, you know, as we go into the book of Revelation, we will see details of how all of this will come and what will happen. But this is something we can, you know, we stand assured of that, you know, even though today things are in this condition as we see it, there is a beautiful, glorious finish or end to all of this, which God is unfolding. Number five. Because um, we have a part to play in all that is going on. And our part is to make sure that the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. That's our part. So the, um, the end time prophecy and everything, God, all that God said will be fulfilled, also includes us. And we have a part to play. In taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, so uh, uh, the we realize there is our part, and therefore, in in the light of that, we serve God faithfully, and we say, okay, you know, let's do our part. We have a part to play in end time prophecy. So, therefore, Paul writes here, Second Corinthians five ten eleven. He says, look, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and meaning believers, we're going to stand for the judgment seat of Christ. And so we persuade people. Right? 
and uh, and and we we reach out to we proclaim the gospel. We're reaching out to people, and we also know what is going to happen. We know the terror of the Lord. We, you know, we know what's going to come, and so we are busy doing our part in reaching people with the gospel. And lastly, uh, number six. The Bible also tells us that prophecy has to be preached. So, you know, when we talk about the gospel, the gospel includes the proclamation of Christ's return. So many times when we preach the gospel, we only talk about the cross, his death and resurrection. That is true. But the gospel includes the fact that Christ is going to come, the prophetic scriptures. Yeah. Look at what Paul wrote in Romans 16, 25 to 27. He's saying, you know, I, 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 I want to establish you according to my gospel. So he's referring to the gospel that Paul, the, uh, the gospel that Paul preached. He says, my gospel, uh, what he was preaching, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret, since the world began. So, of course, the gospel includes the preaching of Jesus Christ. And now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures. So he's talking about the, the scriptures that are speaking forth about the future, the prophetic scriptures, which is made known to all nations according to the command of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. Right. So he's saying the gospel that I'm preaching, and I'm preaching Jesus Christ, this is actually part of the prophetic scriptures, which is made known to all nations. I mean, it has to be proclaimed and made known to all the people so that they can be obedient to the faith, for obedience to the faith. So the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of Jesus Christ includes saying everything that is spoken by the prophetic scriptures. Which, yes, the prophetic scriptures foretold Christ's death. It, the prophetic scriptures foretold his resurrection. But the prophetic scriptures also foretell his coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Daniel chapter 7, you know, speaks about him as the Son of Man, standing before the Ancient of Days. And then when he comes, it says, the kingdoms of the earth will be given to him, and he will give it to the saints. Hmm? This is spoken in Daniel 7. So, the preaching of the Gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, includes preaching everything that is in the prophetic scriptures which should be made known to all the nations for what so that they can become obedient to the faith so what what are we saying that we must also proclaim prophecy so that people can come to faith in Christ right? and uh, um you know, uh, and as we talk about these things, the prophetic scriptures, it will challenge people. Uh, it will stir people in their hearts. It will alert people to the to the power of the scriptures, and it will bring people to the faith. Okay? So we've just gone through several reasons why it is important for us to study the end times. Okay. Now, before I move forward into the next section where we are going to uh, explain how we are going to study end time scriptures, let me pause and see if there are any questions or any comments at this time. Any questions? Uh, everybody's following? Everything's okay? All good? Yes, Mr. Okay. All right. So. We're now going to talk about how our approach in studying end time prophecy. How are we going to, uh, what are some guidelines, what are some things we must keep in mind as we study end time 
uh, scriptures. Right? Number one, we take things in the literal sense first, and then the figurative. Right? So, in uh, when we look at end time prophetic scripture. There are some things that are stated for us literally, and then there are some things that are given to us in figurative language. So, whatever is literal, we will take it literal. And if the literal is an impossibility, that means, hey, that cannot happen. Uh, or if it is intended for us to be it to be interpreted, then is when we will uh, say, okay, what we are reading is figurative, so it has to be interpreted. Right? So in our interpreting of these figurative texts, we let scripture do the interpretation for us. So it's very important. Uh, we don't just, you know, uh, interpret those figurative texts according to our mind. No, no, no. In many cases, you will find that the scripture itself interprets. For example, and, and we will give many examples of this. Um, for example, you know, in um, in Revelation 17, it talks about the great harlot who sits upon the waters. So you read, like, okay, what is this strange thing? Who is this great harlot? And what are these waters it's sitting upon? So, you know, before we start going off and making up our own idea on what the great harlot is and what are the waters, you read the rest of the chapter. And as you progress through the chapter, you begin to see uh, explanation on about the harlot. It's a mystery Babylon, uh, uh, attacking the believers, uh, and so on. And so we can, and then you tie it back to what we read earlier in our Revelation 13, uh, talks about the Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet. And the false prophet is giving rise to a, a, a world religious system, and so then you, it's all together. It's all you know connected. Scripture is already there, and uh, and then as you read through Revelation seventeen, it tells us that the they they rebelled against this great harlot and uh, the the antichrist and his uh, leaders. They rebelled against oh. So then, obviously, this is the false prophet and the world religious system that he brought in that is being referred to. And then in Revelation 17, in that same chapter, it says, the waters refer to the nations among whom the harlot is sitting. So the waters are referring to nations. See, the scripture is already giving us the meaning of that figurative language. right? So waters used there is already explained to us that it is referring to the nations. So like this, you know, uh, in many places, uh, you will find uh, interpretation. Another example is in Revelation 12. Uh, it talks about, uh, you know, John seeing a big dragon. Uh, he sees a woman. He sees the sun, the moon, the 11 stars, uh, the 12 stars. Uh, then he sees a great dragon. So we'd be like, wonder, we'd be wondering, like, well, who is this woman? Uh, who's the sun and the moon and the twelve stars? And what is this great dragon? Again, we should not run off and make up our own things. So, oh, you know, uh, which country uses dragon as an image? Or oh, the, the dragon is representing that country? No, 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 no. It is explained to us in scripture. So. When I talk about the sun, the moon, the 12 stars, we can see clearly, you go back into the book of Genesis, and there uh, Joseph has a dream, sun, moon, 12 stars, uh, the stars. So, oh, so the woman is the nation of Israel. She gave birth to the man-child. 
that is Christ. It's very clearly explained in, in Revelation 12. The man-child is Jesus. Why? Because he rules the nations with the rod of iron. And he was caught up into heaven. Jesus ascended. So the man-child is clearly explained there for us. And so who gave birth to the man-child? This woman. Who is this woman? You can connect it back to the Old Testament. Oh, that's the nation of Israel. Then who is this dragon? You read on in, chapter, and in that same chapter and say, oh, the dragon is the old serpent, Satan of old. So the dragon is not representing a country. It's talking about Satan. And the dragon persecutes the woman, which is attacks the nation of Israel. Right. So I'm just giving another example where in Revelation 12, there are a lot of figures, a woman, a man-child, a dragon. Uh, but in that same chapter, many of these figures are explained for us. And in other places in Scripture, these are explained for us. So in our studying the end times, we take things in the literal sense first. Right. So uh, when it comes to timing, you know, sometimes time will be given to us in a literal number of days. Um, uh, it will be given or it may be given in figurative time, times and half a time, a time, one year, times, two years and half a time, half a year. So one plus two plus half, three and a half. Right, so we will. Oh, we understand. So it's talking about three and a half years, but it's given to us in figurative language: time, times, and half a time. Right. So, uh, so we will explain it. You know, we'll take it literal. Otherwise, we'll take it as figurative, and we look within the text to interpret the figurative. Another second uh, approach in studying end time scripture is uh, we do not engage in speculation or sensationalism. We don't try to, <laughs> we don't try to, you know, uh, unnecessarily stir up emotions and by making false predictions. We don't do that. Right? So. For example, I mean, we know the scripture in Matthew 24, 36, Jesus said, you know, of that day and hour, nobody knows. Nobody knows of that day and hour, not even the angels. So only the Father knows, right? So we shouldn't speculate. And then if you look back in church history, uh, there have been a number of times people have tried to predict when Jesus will come back. I remember uh, some time back, and uh, there was a book. Uh, the title of that book is Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. I forget who the author was, but you know, uh, 1988, Jesus is coming back. You know, it's been a long time since then. And, uh, uh, and then like that, you know, at different times, people have predicted uh, uh, when Jesus is going to come back. Uh, I remember even recently, that means in the recent past, and I think this, the year was in uh, maybe 2018, I think it was, when um, there was, uh, what was referred to as the blood moon, I think that particular year. And all these blood moons have come and gone. Basically, it's the moon looking like red. Uh, because of, of the way the sun, the earth, and the moon are aligned, there at times the moon looks blood red. And so I think it was 2018, I forget the exact year, but it was in the recent past. That particular year, there was, there was again, this blood moon uh, was going to happen. And also that same year, uh, the, the sun, the moon, and there were these 12 stars that were coming in this, they were, going, they were aligned in the shape of this woman, of a, of a woman. So uh, there was one email circulating among, in the Christian community, and I don't know if some of you got it, but 
the email was pointing to, you know, the sun, the moon, and these two stars are coming in this particular constellation, this woman being, you know, coming. And they were saying that is the fulfillment of Revelation 12. And uh, so that particular, and they even picked the date, I think sometime in September, when uh, this was going to happen. Uh, they said, oh, that is the day. Uh, the end of the world or something you know and I, I remember getting that email i remember somebody telling you have to warn all the people in the church that that day everybody has to go and be waiting because the lord will come on that day because that's the day the sun the moon and these 12 stars are all coming perfect in their you know alignment and all whatever and i i i received that email you know and i just it's okay you know, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to, you know, I didn't even talk about it because, hey, the Bible tells us very clearly that day and the hour nobody knows. And I also knew Revelation 12 is not talking about that physical alignment. It, you know, like I explained earlier, Revelation 12 is talking about something else, but they were using Revelation 12 to talk about uh, something that was happening in the uh, you know in this in the in the space and so you know i just kept quiet it didn't do anything a lot of some people were very excited about all this but that day came and went and nothing happened you know so we have seen examples happening over and over again about speculation and prediction sensationalism and we should avoid that right we don't want to engage in that the third thing is we are aware that there are different positions in interpreting bible prophecy and we're going to talk about some of these and understand that All right okay it's uh, time for a break so let me pause here we'll go for a 10 minutes break and we'll come back and we'll you know take up any questions and we'll continue forward from here so let me pause here for a break okay so we'll be back in 10 minutes everyone thank you